a majority of investors believe the stock market is in a bubble and many fear a recession. Close to 70% of investors surveyed believe the market will see a steep crash very soon. So in this video, we're going to go over five recession proof dividend paying companies who are capable of withstanding any major economic downturn. All five stocks that we're going to discuss in today's video actually outperformed the S&P 500 back during the March 2020 crash, where during that period, we saw the major index drop close to 34%. So all of the companies we're going to go over today performed better and did not see such a significant decline like we saw back in the month of March. They are all dividend paying stocks who continue to raise their payment and provide investors with that cash dividend, even through the toughest economic conditions. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to please hit that like button and subscribe. I am the Gen Z investor and every single day we talk about the stock market, going over different stocks you can buy and sell and any major market news. So please hit the like button, subscribe for daily videos. And today we're going to focus on some recession proof blue chip dividend paying companies that may be a great addition to your portfolio because of the risk of a stock market crash coming in 2021. And the first company that we're going to go over today is Walmart. Ticker WMT, they currently trade for $142 per share and have grown by over 23% over the past year. Their current market cap is just below $400 billion and they are one of the largest retailers in the world. They trade with a forward PE of just above 25 and their current dividend yield is 1.5%. We all know Walmart, they are one of the largest retailers on the planet and they are spread out across every city within the United States and Canada. And over the past 5 years, the company is up 113%. And even during tough economic times, consumers still shop at Walmart for their everyday essentials, leading to this company continuing to grow their total top line. And if we take a look at the one year share price chart, from their high on March 10, 2020 of around $120 per share before the massive decline in the market, this company dropped a total of 13% at their lowest point. So during the same period when the total market lost 34% of their value, Walmart's stock only saw a very small 13% decline. And that just shows how resilient and somewhat recession proof this name is. And from that low point, similar to the S&P, we have seen nothing but continuous upward momentum and the company has grown close to 37% from their lowest level. And they continued to grow revenue even during a point in time where some major brands were going out of business. And in the trailing 12 months, they brought in close to $550 billion of total revenue compared to their 2019 number of $514 billion. So a massive uptick in total revenue as time goes on, even through one of the harshest pandemics we've ever seen. And if we take a look at their dividend, the current yield of 1.5% only makes up around 38% of their total net income. They grow it at a small 2% per year, but their dividend growth streak has been absolutely incredible, currently sitting at 47 years. So that just means during every single economic recession and depression we've seen over the past 47 years, not only do they pay out a dividend, they continue to raise it even during those tough times, which is a great sign for some income investors. And with treasury yields at all time lows, this company with their 1.5% dividend, the very strong recession proof nature may be a great idea for those who want to bolster up and be a little bit more defensive in their portfolios. And Walmart's current dividend safety score comes in at 78, so it is considered safe and very little risk of a dividend cut coming anytime soon. And like I mentioned, they have a very low beta of only 0.52, so not a lot of share price volatility from this blue chip name. So definitely a company to take a look at if you have fears of an upcoming recession or stock market collapse. They have proven to withstand the hard times, and I believe they will continue to do so for very long in the future. And now if we move on to the second recession proof name in this video, we have Hormel Foods. This is a dividend king that currently trades for around $49 per share and has a market cap of $25 billion. Their current dividend yield is at 2% and they trade at a forward PE just above 27. And if we take a look at their one year performance, from their high point back in early February of 2020, the company only dropped 17% during the March crash. 
So once again, compared to the overall market, who lost 34% in value, this company did not see such a significant decline and grossly outperformed during the tough economic conditions. And this company is a leader in the food space, and if we take a look at their website, they own and operate many different brands that you can find in almost any grocery store across America. So nice diversified product suite, so many different international brands as well, and this company has been around for a long period of time and continue to grow each and every year. And if we take a look at their dividend, their 2% current dividend yield only makes up 56% of their net income, which means it is very sustainable, a lot of room to reinvest and grow their business, plus continue to annually grow that payment over the next few years in the future. And they have a massive five-year dividend growth rate of over 13%. And their dividend growth streak is at 54 years. So Hormel, I believe to be one of the best and brightest dividend kings on the market. With a 54 year dividend growth streak, an average dividend growth rate of over 13%, and they still maintain a very safe payout ratio, and they have the highest dividend safety score right now, coming in at 99, this is a great overall sign for those who are attractive to companies with the dividend king status. And again, similar to Walmart, they have a very low beta of 0.45 and can withstand any major downturns in the overall market. So a very safe dividend, the highest rating possible, terrific dividend growth from a long-term blue chip dividend name may be attractive if you want to bolster up some more defensive positions in your overall stock portfolio. And now moving right on to the third company in today's video, we have Verizon the leader in the communication sector, this high yielding company currently trades for $55. Over the past year, they are down 5.6% and actually over the past month, they have seen a significant downturn. So maybe at a very attractive level to start or add to an existing position. Their current market cap is 225 billion and they trade at a forward PE of only 10.8. So a ton of value at this current point in time. And the dividend yield on this stock is at 4.58%, which is very high compared to where the market is right now. And taking a look at their one-year share price chart, before the crash on February 10th, 2020, the company traded for more than $60 per share. And then from that high point to their lowest point during the crash, they only lost 17% of their value. So they withstood very well during the tough economic decline when the S&P lost 34%. So this high yielding company performs very well and isn't very volatile compared to the overall market. So again, if you're looking for some nice dividend income and you want a higher yield player with a current rate of 4.6%, definitely take a look at Verizon. Their payout ratio is only 55% of their net income and their dividend growth streak is at 16 consecutive years. And their income is considered very safe coming in with an 87. And compared to the first two companies, another very low beta of only 0.37. So once again, not a lot of volatility. They withstood the downturn very well. And this may be a great company to take a look at for some more income and a dividend portfolio. And now moving on to the fourth stock in today's video, we have Procter & Gamble. Ticker PG, one of the leaders in the consumer sector, and they currently trade for $129. Over the past year, the company only grew 3% and their current market cap is 317 billion and trade with a forward PE of 22.6. This is another dividend king with a current dividend yield of 2.45% at this level. And PG owns some of the leading consumer brands on the market right now. They have 21 different products who each individually generate over 1 billion in annual sales. And right now you can find Procter & Gamble products in over 180 countries all across the world, which is absolutely incredible. And they don't just sell products. They have market leadership positions in all of their product categories. And if we take a look at their USA market share, 10 of their products right here are the number one rated and all maintain 30 plus percent of their determined market. And why I believe Procter & Gamble is not only one of the best companies in the world, but also one of the most resilient in a recession is because they sell pure necessities. Their overall product mix is diversified into 10 different segments, all providing consumers with necessities. They have baby care, oral care, personal care, health care, different home care products, everything that you need just to live your life. 
Procter & Gamble sells. And you can see that just from their top brands in all the different product segments. So I love this company, very resilient, nice diversified product mix, and their share price still held up very well before the March crash. And during the downturn, they lost 22% of their value. So of course, worse than the first three names we've gone over, but nowhere near the 34% decline we saw from the S&P. And this company also pays a nice dividend with a current yield of just below 2.5%. Again, a very sustainable pay ratio of only 55%. They grow it at around 3.4% per year, so slightly outpacing inflation as time goes on, and they have a massive and extremely impressive 64 years of consecutive dividend growth, which is absolutely incredible. So over the past 64 years, during every bad economic event, Procter & Gamble continue to return investors' capital in the form of a growing dividend each and every year. And even after 64 years, they still have the highest dividend safety score possible coming in at a 99, which is very impressive. And I love this consumer name. So definitely take a look at Procter & Gamble, one of the leaders in the consumer space and largest companies in the S&P 500 with a current value of 317 billion. And now finally, we're gonna jump over to the fifth and final stock to take a look at if you want a more defensive portfolio and you're worried about an upcoming recession, take a look at ticker DLR. This is Digital Realty Trust, and this is a REIT that currently trades for $145. They're up 19% over the past year, and the current market cap is at $42 billion, forward PE of just over 24, and their current yield is at just above 3%. And this is not the traditional REIT where they own malls, different shopping centers, and apartments. This is a specialty data center REIT that is going to continue to operate for long into the future. They own and operate more than 284 facilities and the need for data centers only continue to grow as we develop more technology services. And if we take a look at their one year price chart from their high set back in early March 13th of 2020, they did take a sharp decline of around 24%. So still not as bad as the S&P, but they quickly recovered from that low point only a week later were they back in the green 30%. So they did see a steep decline, worse than the first four in today's video, but they had the fastest recovery. And this company right now, their yield is around 3%, their pair ratio sits at 73%, and they don't grow their dividend very much, but it is considered very safe, coming in at a 94. So if you want some diversity and you want to get into a REIT, but you also understand how the traditional real estate market has been really changed forever, office buildings are no longer needed because of remote work, Malls are kind of shutting down. Traditional commercial real estate isn't as popular as it once was. And even residential and apartments are kind of slowing down because consumers are leaving big compact cities and moving to more rural areas. So the entire real estate sector is kind of taking a hit, except a company like Digital Realty Trust is in a sector of the market as a specialty re that I believe will continue to grow over the long term because we will only ever need more data centers for different storage and technology uses. So definitely take a look at DLR if you want a little bit more of a different brand, not a blue chip long-term payer, but a little bit more growth potential for a recession or safer defensive portfolio. So those were five different companies. If you want a more safety up your portfolio because of the risk of an upcoming stock market crash, if you're one of the 70% of investors who believe the market will see a huge decline going forward, definitely take a look at some of the names we went over in today's video, like Walmart, like Hormel Foods, Procter & Gamble, Verizon, and ticker DLR. So thank you for watching everyone. I am the Gen Z Investor and see you in tomorrow's video.